Good morning everyone and welcome to my channel English Literature. I had made a long note on Philip Sidney. It is too lengthy for me now to just go on because of my physical condition. I cannot talk for a long time. I get out of breath and exhausted. So I plan that how much I can I will talk and then after that it will be Philip Sidney part 2. Okay. Now let's start. I'll start Philip Sidney with Alan Stewart's speech. Among the gilded youth of Elizabethan England, no one was more golden than Philip Sidney. Courtier, poet, soldier, diplomat, he was one of the most promising young men of his time. Actually, Philip Sidney's Edmund Spencer, those are the, um, how to say, towering figures of Elizabethan poetry. He was born at, I just take the information that you need, born at Pensart's place, Kent, in 1554 at his family's ancestral manor, house, farmhouse type. And he was the eldest son of Sir Henry Sidney and Lady Mary Dudley. Now his mother's name is very important, uh, before his father's name. Unlike Spencer, Sidney was uh, from a very prominent family. So there is a difference. We have read about Spencer. Spencer was from a very poor family and he has to struggle hard to gain his place. But Sidney was born with, um, with a golden spoon in his mouth. He was from a prominent family with close ties to the court of Queen Elizabeth I. His father was the Lord President of Wales after 1560 and later he became Lord Deputy of Ireland and her mother was the daughter of John Dudley. That's why I tell you that is, this name is important. The Earl of Northumberland. He was executed but unfortunately he was executed. Who? Sydney's grandfather was executed for leading the attempt to place Lady Jane Grey on the throne in 1553. So it was a sad incident. Now at the age of 10, he entered Shrewsbury School and his classmate was Falke Grenville. Very, very important to note down that Falke Grenville was his classmate in his school and he was his lifelong friend as well as his biographer. 1568 studied three years in Christ Church in Oxford. But he did not complete his studies at Oxford and left the college to travel the continent. So he did not complete his study. Nowadays, if you go anywhere for anything, so your mark sheet, so your certificates, then you will be judged. And then I feel in the time of Aaron Tagore, they can do whatever they just study, they can do their studies, they can continue studies in their ways. And he traveled in Europe under the tutelage of Hubert Languet. Who is Hubert Languet? A humanist scholar. He traveled through France, Germany, Italy and Austria and this traveling gave him enormous experience and knowledge. Of course, what do we read in book? We read in book about geography of various countries, about the places, but if we go there and gain practical knowledge, it will be more helpful than this book is knowledge. But nowadays all we have in Google. Now during this time he also gained knowledge of politics and came in contact with many leading statesmen, elderly figures. He also came in the contact with the richness of Italian poetry and its variety of forms. And it also, uh, you do you remember Chaucer? When Chaucer was sent on various diplomatic mission by his king, um, kings, then he also came in contact with the Italian Renaissance humanistic per, uh, humanism, scholastic persons like Petrarch, Boccaccio and that enriched him, his literary career. And it was true for all others and also for Sydney that his contact, his, this travel helped him a lot in enriching his knowledge and his experience. 1579, 
Sydney, along with other poets like Spencer, Gabriel Harvey, Edward Dreyer, Falke Greville, and other intellectuals, formed a literary group. Very, very important. Keep this point in mind. This is very important. Areopagus. This group and who were the members of this group and what was the motive of this group, what was the object and when it was uh, set up. They formed an intellectual literary group that is called Areopagus. They aimed to reform English verse. Areopagus was the highest hill in Athens, Greece. In place of English accentuated prosodic structure, they preferred the classical system of versification. So this was the aim of this group. That in place of that was so uh, that was used in uh, poetry that accentuated prosodic structure. That is quite uh, formal type, quite unrealistic. This group that comprise that comprises Sidney, Spencer, Harvey, etc. Uh, so such eminent person they preferred the classical system of versification. Okay. He went to Paris and there he witnessed St. Bartholomew Day Massacre. After travelling to many countries, he returned to England in 1575. Okay, the sound has started already outside and I feel that I must stop here and I will talk in next.